tell you that I love you 100 times a day You'll get tired of my voice That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I miss you Um, what's the first app you open on your phone in the morning? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> All right. Can you give my listeners a little history of who you are? Uh, um, my name is John Proudstar. I am from the Basquiat tribe here in Tucson, Arizona. I'm an actor and uh, I also created the first all native superhero comedy book, Tribal Force. And uh, and yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> awesome. If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Very good question. Um, wow, I really like spaghetti. I love spaghetti. What is the weirdest or funniest question you've ever been asked in an interview? Weirdest or funniest question? Uh, I guess it would be if I had to eat one food for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, All right. No, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I can't think of anything offhand. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten? Um, for me, I was, I was compared to an actor named Will Sampson. And Will, uh, is like my hero, my acting hero. And, uh, he was in a movie called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And he had done many films, but I was a little boy watching him. And, uh, I, I just... Yeah, I was like, man, I want to be that guy. And working on movie sets, people would sometimes they come up to me and they say, "Hey, you, you kind of remind me of Will Sampson." So it's like, wow, it's like being compared to your hero, you know? That's awesome. Um, what are some words of encouragement that you could leave for the future generations? Words of encouragement. Um, for me, I guess, um, just, it's difficult to have a dream, um, because it feels like the world is against you or may not be cooperating with your dream. And, and I get that, but you can't, you can't look at things, challenges and, uh, stuff that gets in your way you can't look at it in a negative way you have to look at it in a positive way and um, you know I, it's, it's so easy to give up because you know you're like I don't have the money I don't have the time and nobody's supporting me um, but that's that's your responsibility your responsibility is to take care of that dream and if you want it bad enough you're gonna you're gonna do what you have to do to get to where you gotta go to. And um, yeah, so just uh, stay strong. Great, great. What advice would you have for your 13 year old self? Oh my God, do better in school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a horrible student. And I, you know, it's, it's one of my biggest regrets because I didn't understand that the things I was learning in school, I was going to be able to utilize in my career later on. I didn't realize till I got into my 20s and I thought, man, I'm, I'm having to relearn all this stuff that I ignored in school uh, because as a kid, it was really super boring to me, you know, and it was hard for me to concentrate and focus because I was always thinking about movies or comic books and I wish somebody and maybe they did you know i just wasn't really listening uh but i wish somebody would have shown me hey you know you're gonna if you're gonna go into the entertainment business you you're gonna need these skills that you're learning here in class okay how would you describe your 13 year old self in three words 
funny, dreamer, and ambitious. <laughs> okay. How would your peers describe what you do? Uh, they would say that uh, I think, you know, my, my friends and the people that are close to me, they're really excited for what I'm doing. Um, so, you know, they see online, they see me traveling a lot and going to movie locations. Um, and they always say, oh, you're a movie star now. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not a movie star. Uh, but I guess they would describe it just saying that, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a working actor. That's awesome. What single piece of life advice would you give me? Would I give you? Hmm. Let's see. Dun, dun. Uh, uh, um, you're, you're so young and you're doing so much for your age. Maybe you might not see it like that, but as adults, we see it like that, that you're doing a lot. Um, and that's impressive. Uh, I wasn't as industrious as you are when I was your age. I didn't, but then again, we didn't have access to technology. So maybe it would have been different. Um, but just, um, you know, hold on to your dream, stay true to yourself, uh, stay away from drugs and alcohol, because I saw it destroy a lot of my friends, young people. Uh, me personally, I never drank, I, I've never done drugs because of all the things that I wanted to do in life and accomplish. I felt that if I did those things, it would slow me down and it would take away from those real neat things that I wanted to accomplish, because I knew they were gonna be hard, I knew it was gonna be difficult. Uh, but I always had a vision. I always knew from a very young age that movies and comic books was what I was going to do regardless, uh, no matter what anyone said. And I just wanted to keep myself sharp and focused for the opportunities when they did show up. So that's what I would tell you to stay sharp, stay focused, um, and try not to get involved in any of that stuff. Awesome. Tell me about the three most influential people in your life and how they impacted you. Um, the first one would be my daughter, because uh, when I became a dad, <coughs> it totally changed everything in my life, you know, my outlook and uh, just how I approached life because I was a dad and I had a kid. And, um, you know, I had to, I had to make things happen faster. So my daughter would be number one. Uh, number two would be, hmm, trying to think, uh, I think my father, because of his life, he was a very serious man. He was a sniper scout in World War II. And uh, he was a deputy sheriff here in Tucson and a detective. And he was on the cover of Detective Magazine. And he had done all these great things. Uh, you know, and as a child, I saw all this. I saw him doing all this. So I knew I had big shoes to fill. And he was a very disciplined worker. He was a very hard worker. Uh, both my parents were. And um, so I guess, you know, the second would be my parents. Uh, and then finally, the last one would be my grandmother because she raised me. And she was the one who taught me that movies were a job. And uh, she also supported me. She, like, she was the first one who bought me comic books. So she got me a hook on that. <laughs> That's awesome. What is your favorite TV show? <clears throat> I think it's uh, King of Queens. Um, it's an older show now, uh, but I love King of Queens. I love the comedy. Uh, <clears throat> and I like the Goldbergs. So it's a tie between King of Queens and the Goldbergs. I love the Goldbergs. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. What's your go-to snack? 
My go-to snack. Uh, apples and peanut butter. <laughs> apples are really good. If I should pray for you, what should I pray for? Uh, to give me strength. <laughs> uh, it's a tough business, the entertainment business, in any way, shape, or form. As you're learning, it's tough and it's challenging. And um, everyone around us understands what it's like to have a normal job but very few people understand what it's like to exist in the entertainment business. So it's difficult for everyone to get what we're going through uh, or the challenges that we face. And sometimes they may dismiss it because they don't feel it's important. So, you know, from time to time, I have to stay real focused because even though people come to you with good advice or well-meaning advice, it may not be the best advice for your particular situation, meaning people who work in the entertainment business. So if you're going to pray for me, say, hey, give John strength so he stays focused on what he's doing. All right. <clears throat> Is there anything you would like to talk about that we didn't get to cover? just a little bit about my comic book uh tribal force is the first all native superhero comic book in the history of the united states uh we've been inducted into the smithsonian institute for being the first native comic book ever um or the first all native superhero comic book and um we're going to be starting a kickstarter in july at the san diego comic con and uh that's one of my big passions. I've been doing that for many, 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 many years, trying to get it going. And I've had some failures and successes, uh, but I think I finally found a publisher that is the right fit for the project. So uh, I'm really excited because uh, that's been one of my dreams is to give native kids uh, superheroes, people that they can look up to, people that when they open the book, they say, hey, that guy looks like me or she looks like me. And uh, it's also gonna open up our world like, like Reservation Dogs uh, has done. Um, you know, for non-natives, it's opened up our world to them so they understand this a little better. And I'm hoping that Tribal Force has that same effect. That's awesome. Hey guys, this is John Proudstar and you are hanging out with Faith on Daybreak Star Radio, 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 Radio. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you too, babe. It's very nice meeting you. Yeah, bye. Hey, you already know it's YG Native and Grizzly Brown, huh? Hey, it's the clan. You already know how we coming. Yeah, yeah. They like them natives that are always braided.